You know the NBA season's right around the corner when the NBA GM survey comes out. We gotta react because there were some crazy things said in it. And this is always my favorite of them all because these are the 30 people that we trust to build our favorite team to be good. Like they have to be the smartest in the room. At least they, they're supposed to be, right? And I'm not saying they're not, but there are some things in here that I see to be kind, kind of wild. So let's react. Now you can go back and look at every single GM survey from all the way in 2000. 2002, which is crazy. So shout out to John Schumann, who's been give, giving it uh, his all this whole time. Shout out to him, man. This is always really fun. And the NBA saying that these are the six faces of basketball? Hmm. Uh, no, they're not. All right. So the first one is probably the easiest one. Which team will win the finals? Majority of people, 83% of people to be exact, said that it's going to be the Boston Celtics, which makes sense to me. I already made a video talking about the Celtics, but in that I said that they are the best team in basketball. It is so hard to go back to back. So I am trying to figure out if it's not the Celtics, what team do I trust? And I might be going OKC as well. And a lot of that has to do with them finally having some more playoff wounds, right? We've seen Shea in the playoffs as the number one guy a few different times now. J-Dub's first playoff appearance, Chet's first playoff appearance, and now they get one of the best winners in basketball as far as his individual impact. And Alex Caruso, Isaiah Hardenstein being on the team. Like, this is a super well-constructed roster with a top five player at the top of it. Like, you have pretty much all of the recipe with a good coach, good defense, top five player. There's no real holes as of right now other than the rebounding. We've yet really to see it. But Isaiah Hardenstein kind of closes that a little bit. So that would probably be my number two team as well. The Boston Celtics get 3% of the vote, which equates to a single vote. So shout out to them. Who's going to win the MVP? I think this is something I also agree with. Because this is what I think about it. Luka Doncic not having an MVP at this point in his career is extreme. It's crazy. It's, let's be real. It's crazy. He's been All-NBA first team for 100 years in a row. He's always widely renowned as the best point guard of one of the two best point guards in basketball. He just came off an NBA Finals push. So this feels like a Luka year. But I, the reason why I don't think he will end up getting it is because I do believe that that OKC team might be so regular season dominant. And with Shea being the efficient scorer that he is, that you add the regular season success and averaging 30-ish. Like, that's the recipe to win in uh, NBA, NBA MVP, even though I do believe that Luka's long, long overdue. A GM out there was like Jalen Brown. That's so interesting to me. Like, I wish I wish we got the receipts to this. Now, we never will because I think that GMs would basically say, I don't want to do it anymore if we got receipts. But what GM was like Jalen Brown? Like, I understand it. Finals MVP, sure, sure, sure. But regular season MVP on that team, it's going to be hard. Hey, well, Tatum ain't been able to do it either. It's going to be hard with all that talent to get a regular season MVP. And then at least one person said the same thing about Anthony Edwards. Uh, next, if you're starting a franchise and you could sign anybody, who would it be? I knew this was going to happen. It was going to be Victor Wembanyama. He is the unicorn. I'm sorry. He is the alien. Um, Jokic was last year. A lot of years has been Braun. We've got a car Anthony Towns year throughout history. Wimby feels like the best bet as far as like the overall upside. He could potentially this year be like a top 10 player. But you also do get like Shays, the Jokic's, the Luka's also getting a vote. Which player forces opposing coaches to make the most adjustments? Now Luka Doncic is taking this one. Uh, last year, it was Steph Curry. And I remember, I remember talking about that, which again, I respect and understand. But it was surprised to me that Luka wasn't that high last year. This year, they was like, hey. We don't really have, we can't go into a game against the Dallas Mavericks without talking about exactly what we're doing to defend this brother. Um, so he is number one and Steph Curry is still number two. He just drops 10%. That ain't that big of a deal. This is what things get kind of interesting to me. Breakout player, J-Dub, makes sense. Evan Mobley, makes sense after the playoffs. How can we say Ja Moran is about to have a breakout? 10%? That mean that wasn't one, that was multiple votes where, where somebody said Ja Morant, a breakout? He's been all NBA already. He's literally been all NBA. We talk about him breaking out. He was number seven in MVP his last real healthy season. Breakout. Again, he didn't play last year really. So I'm, I guess that plays a part in it, but it wouldn't even be a breakout. If John Morant was the exact same player as he was two years ago or slightly better than that, that's not a breakout to me. That's so wild that some GMs is like, yeah, it's John Morant. He literally is one most improved player already, y'all. Even though he probably shouldn't. I ain't gonna be honest. With you. I'm gonna be honest with you. He probably shouldn't have won. It should have went to his teammate Desmond Bain, but... That's just a crazy one for me. I think Paolo is not a crazy guess or a crazy vote in, but he's coming off an all-star year. So a breakout for him would mean that he's in conversations to be a top 15 player in basketball. And I guess that's not out of the realm of possibility, but in my mind, when I think about breakouts, I think about the dudes that have not made an all-star appearance just yet or haven't been the number one option on a playoff team or something like that. I really like the Brandon Miller pick. Y'all saw the video. I am really invested in the Charlotte Hornets for better or for worse this season. So the Brandon Miller pick makes sense to me. 
Um, next, we get best point guard in basketball. These things are always very weird. I can agree that Luka Doncic is the best point guard in basketball. I think they got these top four pretty right. Now, things get so stupid here because there's like people don't understand that with the GM survey, they don't give you this and say, check the box. This is a write-in thing. So some GM out there thinks that Shea Gilgis Alexander is a shooting guard. Some GM out there thinks that Steph Curry is a shooting guard knowing damn well this is what year 14, 15 for Steph Curry? Y'all still saying that he's a shooting guard? I would bet a lot of money that that's one of them older GMs. He can't be a point guard. He shoots too damn much. That's got to be one of the old heads, bro. Now, none of the new GMs are under, are saying that he's a shooting guard. And even Luka Doncic being the shooting guard makes sense at least a little bit because Kyrie Irving is on the team and he's traditionally a point guard. So I, I guess I'll give a pass to the 7% of people that say Luka. But these two dudes, I don't see an argument for either of these two dudes to be a shooting guard. Unless you're saying Josh Giddey was the one last year? Ah, uh, no thank you. Small four gets even crazier. How does Luka get small four? Luka has got votes in point guards, shooting guards, and small fours. Somehow he's a better small four than he is a shooting guard. What's, what, what are we doing? Uh, Jason Tatum being there makes sense to me. Um, but I also think that that position is just a bit weird because I would classify Tatum as a four man nowadays. You think about their normal star lineup where it is Holiday and White as the guards, Jalen Brown and Tatum. Again, it's interchangeable. Positions don't really exist, but I kind of look at Tatum more as a four. Same thing with Kevin Durant and LeBron in my mind. They've transitioned to the point where they're fours. When you think about the star lineup for the Phoenix Suns, what's going to be Tyus Jones, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, KD, and Nurk. Who's that four man? It ain't Bradley Beal or even LeBron James. I mean, you can maybe argue that Rui Hachimura is the four, but for the most part, I see these dudes as, as four men myself. But the real best four in basketball is Giannis Adetokounmpo. I don't think there should be a vote for anybody else, honestly. And al almost, he got a unanimous vote last year, but they're saying Kevin Durant. And then you got like Anthony Davis, who is a five man, in my opinion. Draymond Green is still a four, but he is nowhere near the best power forward in basketball in 2024. Are we being real? DeMontis Sabonis is a five man. Has, did DeMontis Sabonis play a single minute at power forward last season? Did he play a single minute at power forward? I love the internet because I can figure that out. I can, <laughs> I can do one Google search and figure out if DeMontis Sabonis played a single minute at power forward this year. Nope. 100% cool. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It does look like he played at least one possession as the four this year. So yeah, that, that's enough to get him that best power forward in the league's title. I like that. They had a defensive rating in that one possession. And that was more than one possession, but regardless of a 146. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now he hasn't really played the four since he was in Indiana. Like his whole Sacramento career, he's been a five man. I think we can agree there. There is a GM in basketball that's like, nah, that's my four man. They even got Wimby as the four. And he did play a lot of four last season with uh, Zach Collins as the five. But eventually they got rid of that. And that's when he started to look even more amazing. Best center in the basketball is still Jokic. But Wimby getting 3% of the vote is really just one vote. So there's one GM out there that thinks that Wimby is a better basketball player today than Jokic and Embiid. Can't get there yet. Maybe one day. Cannot get there yet. Highest percentage of total votes per position. Jokic, of course, got all of that. Cool. This is what we talk about the offseasons. You do see OKC get the best overall offseason. Again, I would agree there. Which player acquisition will be the biggest impact? I can agree that Paul George is probably going to be the single most impactful player movement dude of the season where he turns Philly from like, oh, they, they decent. They could maybe do something. So like, oh, snap, you got to take this team extremely seriously. I like that. The most underrated will be Alex Caruso going to OKC. But then you got like, you know, KCP, IHAR, Tyce Jones was a good one for a minimum, Clay Thompson, Chris Paul. And I like, I like this GM, whoever said Caleb Martin, because he's thinking outside the box. Do I agree? Lord knows I don't. But I, I like that this man is thinking. That might have been Daryl Morey himself patting him on the back. We got Caleb Martin for a steal. Most approved team has got to be the Grizzlies because they won't be the most injured team in NBA history, even though they already have a Jaron injury, a Vince Williams injury, and then a Gigi Jackson injury, and John Morant turned his ankle last night. So <laughs> it's already started not too great, but as long as they have half of a more healthy season, they should be the best team as far as improvement goes. And also don't hate the Philly pick. Philly was a seven seed last year. They were, what, 31 and 8 when Joel Embiid played. So assuming that Joel Embiid is healthy, they should jump up the standards quite a bit. The most surprising move undoubtedly has to be Carl Anthony Towns to New York because that literally came out of nowhere. Like, Paul George to Philly, we were kind of writing that in. We were saying that he's probably going to lose the Clippers. Who has cap space? The 76ers do. He's going to the 76ers. DeMar DeRozan to Sacramento was kind of murmured a little bit for a couple days before it was official. Mikael Bridges came out of nowhere as well. I guess that Leon Rose just do things under the table. Nobody's even thinking about it until it's done. But this is my favorite. I, I think I've said that about a couple different categories. But 
when we talk about the rookies and stuff, that's where things get really interesting to me. Who will win the rookie of the year? It's Reed Shepard with half of the votes. And I think a lot of that has to do with where he looked like the best rookie in Summer League. Like, at least those first couple games, like, oh my God, him at number three, is that too low? Was that too low for him? And I understand it. He's got a lot of people he's competing with from Amin Thompson to Fred Van Vliet to Jalen Green to so on and so forth. But I do believe because he is so good right now, he's going to make his way into that rotation. When you're that talented with that type of coach that wants to win every single game, no matter how young you are, you're going to get your minutes. I'm not mad at the Zach Eady pick because out of all of the rookies in this class, he's the one that will have some of the most opportunity, at least early on, because it seems like they're going to start him in Memphis. I also think that Alex Sarr is going to get a lot of opportunities, but he only received the vote. But as you see, the first overall pick, Zachary Richesay, 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 uh got zero votes as the rookie of the year, which I thought was interesting. Last year, they thought Wimby was 50%. They were 50% of the league that was like, ah, do we believe in him? You should have. Best rookie in five years, Reed Shepard with 43% of the vote. Stefan Castle with 17%. This is where we do get Zachary in Atlanta. Bub Carrington gets a couple votes. Same thing with Alex Sarr. Modest Buzel is whoop, 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 whoop. Donovan Klingon, Ron Holland, and then Dalton Connect got at least a vote. Now, this is always my favorite part because now that we can go back through history, let's see how often these GMs are right. And I'm only going surface level. I, I know they're going to be like second round picks. Like nobody was thinking about Jokic in his draft class. You feel me? But like for the most part, five years from now, about 70% of people said Zion. Him and John Morant were the top two. That feels about right. Unless I'm really forgetting somebody in this class. I don't know. We'll move on to the next one. This is where they got it wrong. Luka only has 17% of the vote, while DeAndre Aiden had 27% of the vote. And now of all of these dudes... I mean, Marvin Bagley and Kevin Knox both got votes, and they are out of the league and almost out of the league. No disrespect. Oh, man. I missed that one. Congrats on the extension, Wendell. Then the year before that, 24% of GM said Josh Jackson. It's not an amazing track record, but you do see 21% of people saying, yeah, Tatum is probably going to be that dude. I like that. Year before that, Ben Simmons, 70% of the vote. Joel Embiid is 3%, but this is weird because Joel Embiid, this was his rookie season, but he was drafted the year before that. Ben Simmons having 70% of the vote makes sense. And that's what it was looking like until all of the injuries and all the other stuff. Now we get to Carl Towns. Ooh, I should go back and look at the biggest steals of the draft. Nikhil Alexander-Walker. That's not bad, bro, because now Nikhil Alexander-Walker is a really good role player. They were on top of that. Now, he ain't the star that maybe 33% of GMs thought, but he's a really quality player. Somebody said Nicholas Claxton. That's a good get, man. The year before that, 27% of people said Shea was the biggest steal. You got give, give a hand of applause for these dudes that said that because that's that's right. And even at the third overall pick, people are like, Lucas too low. Lucas too low. Somebody said the biggest steal of the draft was DeAndre Aiden. He went one. He went the earliest a single person can go. It's insane. Somebody said Dennis Smith Jr. 37% said Dennis Smith Jr. Whoever this 7% is that said Donovan Mitchell, congratulations. You got yourself one. Uh, we also see Ojan at 23. You're right there. Jason Tatum at three, even though it is three. That's not really wrong. DeJounte Murray at 29. Good get, man. You got Henry Ellison. Oh, none of these dudes are in the league anymore other than Chris Dunn and DeJounte. Tough. Somebody said Pascal at 27. Whoa, that's cr that's crazy, bro. That's, that's a good GM right there. Anyway, this year they said Justice Winslow, Bobby Portis who is a good one. Um, Devin Booker at 13 got a vote. Jabari Parker, who'll be the best in five years. Joel Embiid did get 21% of the vote. Somebody said Doug McDermott. I wish. <laughs> I wish. The biggest steal, Rodney Hood. Zach Levine at 13 is not bad. So, I mean, I could sit here all day. The best rookie in five years of this class, they said it was going to be VO. And honestly, if it was for injuries, it probably would have been VO. Oh, my God. Some GM said Giannis. Who is this guy? Who's the guy that thought that Giannis was going to be best in five years? Because obviously he's from the future. That dude was 130 pounds soaking wet coming out of Greece. Couldn't even dribble. And one GM was like, that's the guy that's going to be the best. Somebody even gave him a vote down here. Who will be the biggest steal? Wow. I, I wish we get to see the ballots because I want to know who this man is that said that because I want to shake his hand because he's obviously know what the hell he's talking about. The best five in five years would be Anthony Davis for sure. Um, good there. Five years, Kyrie Irving. You give them the green light there. And then John Wall in this year. So, again, they have some hits. They have some misses. But it's always interesting as we get back to uh, Reed Shepard. Again, this is not one of those classes with a star player up top. So, I guess we'll have to wait and see. This year's biggest deal, Bub Carrington, Devin Carter, Johnny Furphy, 
I'm not a draft guy, so I couldn't tell you. I do like that Madis Wazelis is here, though. Shout out to him. Best international player in the NBA, almost 90% says Yoke. International player not in the NBA, Sasa Vazenkov, who's no, who was there last year, but no longer. Best defensive player in basketball is Victor with Miyama already. And I've said this before. I didn't know if I was going to give him the number one spot, but I do believe he's... I think he's the most impactful defensive player. And it's hard for me to get to saying that that makes him the best. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's where my head is at right now. Then perimeter defenders, you got Drew Holiday first. Interior will be with Miyama, of course. Versatile is... is Giannis and I'm sad that Bam is down here for it. I think Bam is the most versatile in the NBA, but I'm not mad at Giannis either. Best defense should be the Celtics. And then we get to the coach and stuff. All you need to know is that it's a crime that Eric Spoelstra has zero coach of the years when the league is respecting the hell out of him. 69% of the GM saying that he's the best coach. The year before that, it was 73%. I think he got the year before that as well. So pretty unanimous that Eric Spoelstra is the best coach in hoops. He's also maybe the best manager and motivator. Tyron Lue, the best X's and O's adjustment guy. Best offense is Rick Carlisle. Best defense is Spolster again. The best newcomer is Coach Bud. And then the best assistant is Micah Norrie, who we saw in the playoffs last year, and Sam Cassell, who I think will get an NBA job between like this year and like two years from now. And then Chris Paul might be a coach one day. They always say Chris Paul is always. Most fun teams to watch. The Pacers are at the top. I mean, it's hard not to say they're fun because they are this run and gun fast offensive team. Okay, seized up there as well. And then we got home court advantage, of course. I mean, they're my Mile High City for a reason. Most efficient offense prediction is going to be the Celtics. Toughest team to predict is the Lakers. Um, my, my podcast is coming back. I rebranded it. It's now called Small Ball with Kenny Beecham. And my first episode, I'm dealing with all 30 teams to some capacity. And I would agree with this. The Lakers are one of those teams where like the over-under is 42 and a half. Where I feel pretty good about saying I trust them to win at least 43 games. But how much more than 43? Could they be a top six seed? Or will 43 wins just put them as a seventh seed again and so on and so forth? So I can agree with this. But I also agree with these two teams. Like the Pelicans made an adjustment to go get DeJounte Murray. I wouldn't be surprised if they made the playoffs, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they were in the play-in. The Rockets are a good team, but they are just unfortunate to be in the Western Conference where there are 11 other really good teams. So will this young team be the one to take the jump or other teams settle down? I don't really know. Most promising young core has to be OKC. Most athletic is Anthony Edwards. Um, Pierce Shooter is going to be Steph Curry as always. Fastest player is De'Aaron Fox for the second year running. Steph Curry is the best off the ball. It's kind of interesting that it's not unanimous, but some of these dudes they mentioned, Desmond Bain is really good there too. Mikel Bridges can be really good there as well. So I guess I'm not too mad at it, but he's Steph Curry. I feel like every shooting competition, anything to do with shooting, my vote is Steph Curry. Uh, best passer, Yoke. Best leader is Steph Curry as well. Um, last year was Braun. Braun is now down to 23%. You the fell off, bro, bro. Most versatile player in the entire NBA is going to be Giannis. Highest basketball IQ. I think all of these guys deserve a vote. Um, even the young man, Tyrese Halliburton being there. He's just one vote, but that's pretty interesting. Um, game on the line. Who do you want to take in a shot? After the Olympics, I'm surprised it's not higher than 40% after the shot that he hit. You also got like DeMar DeRozan get a vote, Shea get a vote, Kyrie get a vote, even Jamal Murray, two game winners in the finals. So that's cool. And then lastly, what rule would you change? And it has to do with roster construction. Basically, everybody is saying that the second apron stinks and get rid of it. Uh, cause it's harder for us to do our job, which I've kind of agreed with as of right now. I think I need like two more years of sample size. So um, yeah, let me know what you think, man. NBA GM survey, the 30 GMs that we trust to build our teams that they, they cook. I don't know. Let me know.